Many of us have heard about the large number of people that will be saved during the Great Tribulation. But how will they be saved? And how will God protect them? Well, that's the topic our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, explores today here on Through the Bible. If you're a new listener, welcome aboard what Dr. McGee lovingly called the Bible bus. Sitting beside you are listeners from more than 160 countries speaking over 100 languages and dialects worldwide. Today, Dr. McGee takes the Bible bus through Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 to 4. Now, don't worry if it seems like you're joining us at the end of our five-year journey through the whole Word of God. You see, Dr. McGee designed these broadcasts so that you can stop and start at any time. In fact, Revelation is actually a great place to begin. Dr. McGee often referred to it as the Great Union Station, or the International Air Terminal, where all the great trunk lines of prophecy come in from other places in Scripture. I know that you're going to love these studies. And after we're done in this amazing book, we'll return to Genesis and start from the very beginning. So stay with us. Now, before we get started, four things are important for you to know as you begin this journey. First, Dr. McGee designed our studies so that we'll move back and forth between the Old Testament and New Testament, giving us a very integrated look at who God is and how very much He loves each one of us. Second, if you miss a study and you want to catch up, you can listen online for free or you can download our iPhone or Android apps to take these messages with you on the go. Both of these options are available to you when you visit our website, ttb.org. Third, we also make the entire series available for purchase on CDs, MP3 discs, or even a flash drive if you'd like to share it with a family member or friend. Again, our web address is ttb.org. Or call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE. And last but not least, one of our favorite traditions here on Through the Bible is celebrating God's goodness and mercy by sharing letters from fellow Bible bus passengers whose lives have been changed by His Word. So why don't we share a few now? Let's read some notes that have recently been left on our Facebook wall. First, we have a listener named Zeta who wrote, I love today's sermon. I'm so thankful to the Father who has made it possible for me to have a better understanding of his word through the ministry of the late Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Praise God for this amazing source of knowledge. I've been on the Bible bus since I was 12, but it wasn't until five years later when I found it online that I was able to listen regularly. Thank you to all of you who support this program and make it possible. A big smile and a hello to my fellow bus riders too. Well, hello to you, Zeta. Thanks for your note and also for joining us each day. And then here's, this is another note. This is from a Facebook friend as well. It's a joy to be able to share through the Bible with friends around the world. We listen via your phone app and pray it will touch even more people than ever before. As we journey through God's word, you'll know us as we are the ones sitting on the back of the bus exclaiming, Hallelujah. Isn't that great? I just love her enthusiasm. Our last Facebook post comes from Leslie, who writes, I download your podcasts on my old iPhone so I can listen to Through the Bible anytime. I love being able to listen to whichever book I'm ready for and for as many hours as I can each day. It's a huge blessing. I praise Jesus for J. Vernon McGee. I'm so happy his ministry lives on and on. Well, thanks, Leslie, and I'm so glad that you're digging into God's Word with us as well each day. If you haven't visited our Facebook page yet, I'd invite you to do that today as well. It's a great place to hear from fellow bus riders and to post your own comments. You'll also find broadcast updates, inspiring quotes from Dr. McGee, and specific information on how you can be praying for Through the Bible and our listeners around the world. To join us, visit us at facebook.com slash ttbradio and click on the button to begin following us. Now let's begin our study in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we long to hear from you today. Please allow your Spirit to speak to our hearts and help us to understand the meaning 
of what we're studying. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we come to the second verse of this seventh chapter of Revelation, and I want to preface again my remarks by saying that we're not in a book that cannot be understood and that it's just a jumble of symbols. That is not accurate. There's no book that is so mathematically divided. There is no book that the divisions are made clearer than they are in the book of Revelation. Now, if we get bogged down in some place and try to take symbols and juggle them to fit into any system that we might want to, then we're going to be in real trouble. But if we'll just let John tell us as we go along where we are, and we're now in a section that we have labeled the Great Tribulation. Well, I shouldn't say we labeled it. The Lord Jesus is the one who gave it that label. And this period takes place after the church leaves. It's the things that are after these things, that is, after the church concludes its mission and is taken to be with the law. Now, that, I think, is not only reasonable, but I personally feel that it's very clear, not only here, but no prophecy is of any private interpretation. Peter says that is, you don't just lift out one verse or even the book of Revelation. And that's the reason the book is difficult, because it just happens to be the last book of the Bible, and there's 65 books come before it, and we ought to know a little about those books that come before it if we are to understand this book. That doesn't mean when we get down now into details, and John is going into details concerning the great tribulation period, or the period that has not been elaborated on in any place in the Scripture except in the Olivet Discourse that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. So John is merely widening out that and giving us additional information. And what he says is based on what the Lord Jesus had to say. Now we saw that there were six seals open, and these six seals had for us, and I trust that they had for us, a real message, and that they actually revealed the great plan of the Great Tribulation period. And these six seals open with the four great tragedies that are coming upon the earth, the beginning of the judgments, and then the fifth seal, let us look at a martyred company of people. It was a great throng. And then the sixth seal, we were introduced to some of the signs of the coming doom that is to come upon a godless world in the great tribulation period. Now the question arose, well, will anybody be saved in that period? We saw last time a great company is going to be saved. Actually, this will be a time that there'll be nothing to correspond to it in the number of people that are saved. There's no other time period. That is seven years in which so many people turn to God. And it does reveal the fact that these judgments will accomplish a purpose for God. It will cause multitudes to turn to Him in this period, it's going to cause another multitude to turn actually against him. You see, it's just like the effect, the illustration is, of the sun shining down upon a piece of soft clay. What will it do with it? It'll harden. What will the effect of that same sunlight upon wax? Well, it'll melt it. It has the opposite effect. And so the judgments of God, and I feel that in our lives today as believers, when trouble comes to us, sickness, I've discovered in my own life that it'll either draw you to God or it'll drive you from Him. And we need to be drawn to Him. That's the reason I think the Lord's let some of us have sickness and trouble. He's wanted to draw us closer to Himself, and this was His way of doing it. Now, I want to look here at this first company that are going to be saved during the Great Tribulation period. And we can't explain every little detail here, at least I can't. 
I get a little irritated and provoked that I don't know as much as some of these so-called prophetic teachers today because they seem to have a private line into the Lord. They know now the date when the Lord is coming. They're great at that. And not only that, but actually they can interpret some passages in the most amazing fashion where the scripture says that the blood will be up to the bridal bits in the war of Armageddon. Why, some of these fellas can tell you the type of blood it is. My, they irritate me because I don't seem to be able to get that kind of information. And then I actually wonder what the value of it is after you get it. And to begin with, the church ought to understand clearly that we have been delivered from judgment. We're not going through this period at all. The Lord Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath right now eternal life and shall not come into judgment. And the great tribulation, the judgment, and we're not coming into it. He said so. And he made it clear to the church of Philadelphia. He said, I'm going to deliver you from that hour. What hour? Well, he's talking about it now. Oh, if we would only let the scripture speak for itself. Now, I'm going to let it speak for itself because I'm doing a great deal of talking right here and haven't read anything yet. Verse 2 and 3, I'm reading them. I hope you have your authorized version because I'm reading now my miserable trans, and I ought not to call it a translation. I've merely just attempted to translate the words out of the original. Will you listen to it? And I saw another angel ascending from the sun rising, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a great voice to the four angels to whom it had been given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we shall have sealed the servants or the bond slaves of our God in their foreheads. All right. Now, another angel here means there's a fifth angel. And he apparently is of a higher rank than the other four because he gives them orders. And as we saw in the book of Daniel, and we saw it also in the epistle to the Ephesians, that there are gradation of orders of angels, both good and bad, that Satan has the demon world well organized. He has generals, and he has lieutenant colonels, and majors, and, and he has lieutenants and then a sergeant, and then a great many privates. And so we have on the other side, God has his arranged. So this angel gives orders to the other four. Now, it says here he did it with a great voice. And in the Greek, that is phone megaly. Now, if you turn phone megaly around, you have megaphone. That's where we get our word megaphone. Mega means great, phony noise or voice. And here it's an indication that it's with frightful and fearful judgment that is getting ready to break upon the earth. And it's therefore necessary to secure the servants of God. If he doesn't seal them, they're not going to make it through. Now, they are to be preserved in this day of wrath that's coming on the earth. And the Lord Jesus himself mentioned this. He says in Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened for the sake of these that have been sealed. Now, this is a terrible time. Now, what is the mark that was put on their forehead? Now, here is a place where I must confess, and I sure hope you won't let this get out. We want to keep this just to ourselves because there's some people think I know what that mark is. I don't know what it is. I can only make suggestions here. Now, I recognize there are many that know what that mark is. But the interesting thing is that you can't get any two to agree what it is. So some of them must be wrong. 
I've come to the conclusion they're all wrong on that. And why? Because we're not told what it is. I don't think it's important for the church today to even know what the mark is. We're just told that they're going to be marked. Now, what kind of a mark? I don't know. Now, we are told that there are those that will not be able to trade during this period when Antichrist comes into power unless they have the mark of the beast. Uh, this mark is in contrast to it. But my feeling is that this is a spiritual mark that will be in the lives of those. By their fruits ye shall know them, by their lives. And I believe that's going to be the mark of God's own in this period because the godless are really going to be godless in this period. And I personally don't see how they can be any more godless than the godless are in Los Angeles today, or as the world is getting today. But the Word of God says they can go lots farther than they've gone even in our day. Now, God is going to save a remnant of Israel. Now, we had given first in this chapter, and let me show you how simple even a chapter like this is divided. I have in my book here three divisions of this chapter. You have the reason for the interlude between the sixth and seventh seals. Why? To seal these, to make sure that they're going to make it through. And the Lord Jesus made it very clear that they're going to make it through, that they are going to come through. We begin now here at verse 4, the remnant of Israel sealed. And then in verses 9 through 17, a redeemed multitude of Gentiles. This is the three R's of Revelation. Not reading, writing, and arithmetic, but the reason for the interlude, the remnant of Israel and the redeemed multitude of Gentiles. Now look at the remnant of Israel. When God deals with Israel, I've always noticed he'll deal with dates and he'll deal with numbers. When he's dealing with the church, he never deals with dates or numbers. And that's the reason that we never announce on this program that we had so many saved in a certain year. Now, I had one of the young ladies that runs our robotype machine. She brought me in a clipping, and I have it here somewhere, that we had at that time 15 letters from folk that said they had been saved through the program. And I, at that time, thought, my, this will be a good time for us to start putting down numbers and handing out figures. Well, I began to think that after the day of Pentecost, you never had any numbers given. Paul never turned in a report to anybody how many were saved. And we're told when we get even to this great company of Gentiles, the number's not given. But when you deal with Israel, God deals with numbers and he deals with dates when he's dealing with them, but not with the church. And that's the reason today I think that this matter of date setting has hurt the study of prophecy and brought it down to a low level, whereas this subject ought to be kept on as high a level as any other subject of prophecy. Now he says here in verse 4, and I'm still reading from my translation, and I heard the number of those sealed, a hundred and forty and four thousand sealed out of every tribe of the children of Israel. Now, this company can be identified without any speculation whatsoever. And to me, it's almost nonsense for any group to come along and say, we are the 144,000. Now, two of the cults did that in the beginning, and then they passed 144,000. They apparently were not very optimistic when they started out, but now they pass that number, and you don't hear them mention it anymore because they say they take it literally, and yet they don't now because they pass that number. They just should have gone out of business when they got 144,000, but they didn't. They just kept right on going. But the interesting thing is it does not refer to any group today or the church or any at all. It's during the Great Tribulation 144,000 are to be saved, and it's out of every tribe of Israel. So that if you are in the 144,000, you're not only say that you belong to Israel, 
but you better identify your tribe, or you'd have to because that's going to be done. Now, we need to make that very clear that God will have a remnant of his people that are going to be saved. Now, that may seem to you like a big number. Actually, it's very small. There are about 12 million today in the world, I think. It got down to 10 million under Hitler. It was up to 16 million. But in contrast to that number, you can see the remnant is going to be really very small of the children of Israel, comparatively speaking, very small. But we need to be clear there's no use speculating here and trying to draw on symbols. There are some even that say that the number, 144,000, is a symbol of another number. Well, can't God say what he wants to say? Can he count? Certainly he can. When he says 144,000, I don't think he means 145,000. I think he means exactly that. And then there are to be out of every tribe of Israel. Now, there are some things here that we need to know, that this remnant has always been true. From the day he called Abraham, there's always been the remnant. There's a remnant today in the church. I know many wonderful Christian Jews, and I don't know why I say that, because I don't say Christian Americans or Christian Germans, but we do say it of Israel, because of the fact there is that remnant today. And again, not a large remnant, but there's not a very large remnant of Gentiles. I suppose the great minority group today are real believers in Christ. Now, Paul says in Romans 9, 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. See, that's true today. Now in Romans 11, 4 and 5, he says, But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Paul said in his day, there's a remnant today that are in the church in his day. Now there's a remnant in our day that's in the church and just a remnant of Gentiles to tell the truth. Now, during the Great Tribulation, here is the remnant and the numbers given. Now, we are told that these are the ones that are going to witness in the Great Tribulation period. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, he was talking about the Great Tribulation period and the gospel of the kingdom Somebody says, oh, that's a different gospel? Of course not. God's never had but one way to save sinners. That's through the death of Christ. If you had asked Abel when he brought that little lamb to God and said to him, Abel, do you think that little lamb will save you? He was an intelligent man. He said, no, this little lamb is pointing down because God told my mother that there was coming from her line, from a woman one that would be the savior of the world. And this little lamb points to him. And John the Baptist stepped out of character almost when he said, to, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of the death and burial and resurrection of Christ. That's going to alert the nation Israel. And many will turn to Christ and they'll preach that. But they'll have something to say that we have no right to say they say it's not going to be long until he'll be back here. They'll be able to say that. We have no right to say that at all because we know not the day nor the hour when he shall come. Now, these are divided into tribes here, and we're told how much are in each tribe. Now, I'm going to deal with that. It's a little tedious and technical, but I intend to go through with it and then to try to show why we today need to be very careful of being dogmatic where the Word of God does not give us the answer. Now, the Word of God never told us what the mark is going to be in that day on believers, those that will be God's servants. Frankly, I don't know what it will be. All right, until next time, may God richly bless you, my beloved. 
Well, we're about one-third of the way through our study in the book of Revelation. If you haven't yet downloaded your copy of Dr. McGee's Notes and Outlines, now is the time. Simply visit the resources section of ttb.org and download them for free. And if you'd like to be prepared for our upcoming study in Genesis, you can download those too. Or call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE and join our mailing list so that you'll receive them before the study begins. And when you call us, please remember to mention the station where you hear us, or if you just listen online or via our app, tell us that too. Our study of Revelation continues tomorrow. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I look forward to seeing you then. This program has been brought to you by the faithful friends and supporters of the worldwide ministry of Through the Bible Radio Network.